<laughs> Please take your seats, Mr. Benton. <laughs> Ooh. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the St. Lucie County Planning and Zoning Commission. November 18th, uh, if everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Heavenly Father, as we begin this meeting, we ask that you would guide our thoughts and our actions so that we may have a successful meeting. Please help us to accomplish our goals while displaying your character. We pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Oops. <clears throat> okay. Uh, first off, I want to say welcome to our new secretary, Stephanie. Thank you for joining us. Thank We're happy you. to have you. Thank you. If you don't mind, please call the roll. Okay. Mr. Sanders? Mr. Binner? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Odell? Here. Mr. Slay? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lowndes? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bridgers? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Platt? Here, ma'am. Mr. Bunt? Here. Vice Chair Lowe? <laughs> Yes, <coughs> Chair Taylor. Here, ma'am. Uh, does any commission members have any announcements or disclosures? Seeing none, we'll move on to item seven, uh, the minutes from the meeting of October 21st. Is there any uh, additions <coughs> or corrections? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Sanders? Mr. Binner? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Odell? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Slate? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lowndes? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bridgers? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Slack? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bunt? Yes, ma'am. Vice Chair Lowe? Yes, ma'am. Chair Taylor? Yes, ma'am. All right, moving on to item eight, public comment. If there's any members of the public that wish to speak on non-agenda items, please come forward. Seeing none, close public comment. And we'll move on to item 9A, our public hearings. Um, Madam Secretary, if you can read that item, please. Item 9A, ARCOSA conditional use petition. The applicant is seeking approval of a conditional use petition to allow concrete manufacturing as a permitted use within a, the proposed plan non-residential development, PNRD, to be known as ARCOSA. All right, Mr. McCrane, we're ready for your presentation. Good evening, Chair, members of the Commission. For the record, my name is Chris McCrane, planner with the Planning and Development Services Department. And tonight I'll be presenting agenda item 9A for a conditional use petition submitted by CNC Family Groves and White City Grove Incorporated. The petition is to allow for a concrete manufacturing facility as a permitted use within the proposed ARCOSA plan non residential development. This conditional use is a quasi judicial agenda item. Uh, in addition, I will also be presenting agenda item 9B for requested rezone from AR1 Agricultural Residential to the Planned Non-Residential Development Zoning District and a preliminary site plan approval for a 77,750 square foot concrete manufacturing facility, an approximate 400 or 4,000 square foot office and associated site improvements. The, preliminary, or the proposed preliminary PNRD site plan agenda is also a quasi-judicial. And although I'll be presenting the items together, the board must vote on the item, agenda items separately. Um, in accordance with public notice requirements outlined in section 11.00.03 <laughs> of the St. Lucie County Land Management <coughs> Code, advertisement for this public hearing was advertised in the St. Lucie News Tribune on Saturday, November 6, 2001, or 2021. In addition, notices were mailed to adjacent property owners located within 500 feet of the subject properties and two signs were placed, one at the intersection of Favorite Road and Selvitz Road, and a second sign was placed on the subject property. Uh, the 38.05 project site is located on the north side of the unimproved Favorite Road right-of-way, situated approximately 300 feet east of Post Office Road, 
and 300 feet west of Selvitz Road in Fort Pierce. The subject properties are designated by the mixed use development future land use with a residential suburban land use situated to the east and southeast, public facilities land use to the south, and industrial land use to the west. The city of Fort Pierce's transportation utilities future land use designation is located to the north of the subject property. Pursuant to the St. Lucie County Comprehensive Plan, the subject property is identified as the Cassins Mixed Use Activity Area and is restricted to industrial land uses. The comprehensive plan further requires any future development to be approved through the planned non-residential development process and shall provide appropriate open space and buffering adjacent to residential uses and environmental conditions and site access shall be provided from the west via favorite road. At this time, the subject properties are designated by the AR1 Agricultural Residential Zoning District, <coughs> and the adjacent zoning designations include Residential Single Family 2 to the east, Agricultural Residential to the south and east, Industrial Heavy to the west, Indust Institutional Zoning to the south, and the City of Fort Pierce's Utility Zoning District located to the north. Through the planned, uh, planned non-residential development approval process, the applica application is seeking to redesignate the property's zoning designation from agricultural residential to the planned non-residential development zoning designation. The submitted uh, preliminary site plan identifies a 77,750 square foot manufacturing facility, a 4,000 square foot office, and uh, 461,000 square feet of shell rock lay down yard for finished products, as well as associated site improvements, which include a five foot uh, right of way dedication along the south property boundary, improvements to the favorite road right of way from post office road to the proposed access to the southeast of the subject property, uh, on site water det detention, a uh, five and a half mm -hmm. acre lake, water and wastewater connections with the Fort Pierce Utilities Authority outdoor aggregate storage and silo, vehicular use parking and loading, and an eight foot opaque fence with associated landscaping. According to the preliminary site plan, the following separations are provided from the residential properties to the east. It includes 60, the 60 foot uh, tall silo is set back approximately 769 feet. Um, 802 feet between the proposed manufacturing <laughs> plant <coughs> and approximately 154 feet of separation from the product laid on yard. In addition to the separation provided, the plant also requires the applicant provide a 10 foot landscape buffer along all property boundaries and a 15 foot landscape buffer adjacent to road right of way. Further, um, Furthermore, when a non-residential development abuts residential, the code requires an eight-foot tall masonry wall or opaque fence and perimeter tree plantings and continuous hedge planted on both sides of the barrier in accordance with Land Development Code Section 70904E. The submitted preliminary site plan identifies an eight-foot tall opaque fence and required landscaping to be constructed along the eastern property line adjacent to the pr residential properties. Upon approval of the preliminary plan non-residential de residential development site plan, the applicant will be required to receive final site plan approval pursuant to Land Development Code Section 110205B. And pursuant to Land Development Code Section 110202B, any non-residential use of up to 500,000 square feet for developments identified under the county's targeted industry list shall be designated as a minor site plan and may receive administrative approval from the Director of Planning and Development Services following review and certification from the County's Development Review Committee. The applicant has submitted a concurrent minor site plan application and final site plan documents, which is currently being reviewed by the County's Development Review Committee, pending approval of the conditional use petition and pre preliminary plan on residential site development and rezone. According to the applicant, the offices will occupy approximately six to seven employees, while the manufacturing plant will occupy 25 to 30 employees over two shifts of around 10 to 15 employees each. 
The hours of operation for the manufacturing plant will be between the hours of 7 a.m. and 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, with the occasional weekend shift for maintenance. Deliveries are scheduled between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, and the typical length of the utility poles will be between 80 and 100 feet, and the facility will manufacture approximately six to seven poles per day with, with around 10 to 12 uh, poles being delivered per week. In accordance with public notice requirements outlined in section 11.00.03 of the St. Lucie County Land Development Code, notices and response forms were mailed to adjacent property owners located within 500 feet of the subject property. Of the 30 notices mailed out, the Planning and Development Services Department received three response forms for the conditional use petition. Two responses are not in favor of the conditional use and one response was in favor of the conditional use. The proposed uh, plan on residential development rezone and preliminary site plan conformed to the standards of review set forth in section 11.06.03 and 11.02.07 of the St. Lucie County Land Development Code and have been found to be consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the St. Lucie County Comprehensive Plan. Staff is recommending the Planning and Zoning Commission forward a recommendation of approval to the Board of County Commissioners subject to the following conditions of approval. Um, sorry, I skipped over this one. My apologies. So the conditional use petition, which was this one, conforms to the standards of review set forth in section 11.07.03 of the St. Louis County <coughs> Development Code and is also consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies in the St. Louis County Comprehensive Plan. And staff is recommending that the Planning and Zoning Commission also for a recommendation of approval to the Board of County Commissioners subject to the following conditions. Hmm. The plan on residential development shall always comply with the St. Lucie County Noise Ordinance pursuant to section 28-110 for sound level limitations. All operations shall be limited between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. Prior to the issuance of a vegetation removal permit, a 100% gopher tortoise survey conducted by a state certified gopher tortoise agent per Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission protocol shall be required. And lastly, the Prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, all category one listed invasive plants <coughs> shall be eradicated from the site. This concludes staff's presentation and staff and the uh, applicant's agent are available for any questions. Okay. Is there any questions of staff from the board? <coughs> None? I got one. Okay, Commissioner? Uh, why 10 p.m.? That is the uh, time that's identified under the, uh, land, the St. Lucie County Ordinance for, for noise we limitations. We were just spelling it out. It wasn't anything different than what's already there. I'm sorry? We were just spelling it out then. It's not different than what's already on the books. That's correct. Does that um, go for weekend hours as well, for the, for the occasional weekend shift that was noted in there? So their hours of operation aren't identified to go till 10. That's just something that's required by the ordinance that noise ordinance should be um, restricted past the hours of 10 o'clock. Is this or noise ordinance the same for Saturday and Sunday? It's yes. For those hours? Yeah. Monday through Sunday. Okay. Mr. Chair, Slack? Mr. Chair. Um, I you have a couple of questions. First of all, what is the future land use of uh, the area to the south and east of the subject property? So to the south, it's public facilities, which is where the post office, the sheriff's department, and uh, New Horizons is located. Including that Ag1 uh, parcel that's behind the sheriff's department? Um, so this is the zoning. So, so the oh, zoning district me, is different than the, uh, the future land use. Okay. All right. And I'll, what do we have in terms of ordinances for dust control? and air quality? Um, off the top of my head, I do not know that answer, um, but we can look into that a little bit further if you'd like. Perhaps the applicant can speak on their plans for uh, dust control and air quality. Yeah, we can have them come up.
Good evening. For the record, Brad Curry of the EDC representing the applicant. Uh, the, the process itself, this is a concrete pole manufacturing plant, and it's the, the manufacturing is done internal to the building, and it's um, they have these um, molds that they pour the concrete in, and it's a wet mix, and then they spin the mold to <coughs> centrifugal force, pushes the concrete out to the outside. So in overall, in the creation of it, it's not a lot of dust that's being done, and then once the pole is being has been uh, manufactured, it gets taken to the, the storage area. So I think the only dust that I could imagine would be any um, any vehicle you know driving out to where the poles are stored. But the vehicle that does that is a is a big gantry crane that I think travels at like four miles an hour. So I don't think it's going to kick up much dust either. So I don't from overall, if there is any dust created during the manufacturing process, it's going to be inside the building. And if there's any dust outside, I, I can't, I don't know what the dust would come from on the outside because it's a slow moving crane that moves these poles around on site. Right. But if you are mixing batches of concrete on site, it means you've got cement dust associated with the delivery and moving of that cement uh, powder as well as the dust that um, comes along with the aggregate. And I, I'd like to hear what their plans are to, to handle dust control from the aggregate and from the cement powder as well. I, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you because I haven't, I haven't even asked that question of my client. There is aggregate on the site. It's on the extreme north end of the site, north, northeast end of the site, and they do have a silo that has the material in it. Mm -hmm. But from what I've been told is the mixing occurs inside of the building, and any dust that occurs would just mm -hmm. be for moving the materials outside, which really isn't, the, it's not, the mixing occurs inside of the building. So I, I can't, I haven't ever asked that question. So I, my, client, one, my client is here, I could ask them that question to see if there's a dust problem, but we haven't been posed that question. So I don't have okay. a good answer for you. And perhaps they have this facility repeated on other sites and they could speak this to is, what their policies are. This, this is actually their first facility that they've done. I see, okay. First facility in Florida, I'm sorry. Okay, well, if they've done it in other states, then they probably okay. have it. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll um, have Mr. Hal Fonville come up. How do you, and he can explain a little bit more about the mixing. But what, from my understanding, it's all done inside the building. And there is aggregate storage outside, but it's pretty minimal. Good evening, I'm Hal Fonville from Marcosa. On the, on the aggregate, we use washed aggregate. It has to be pure for our process. So there's not, there would not be a lot of dust with the, with the aggregate itself. Now the cement mix, there could be dust, but it's not, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very confined to one, one space at the, at the end of the plant where everything gets mixed. Um, and we've tried to put that as far away from everyone that could be affected by it as possible. So, um, and then like Mr. Curry was saying, uh, the, the dust on the outside we don't think is a uh, concern because we have big, big cranes that move very slow. Um, that would be on the through the storage yard. So I hope that answered your question. But if not, I would <laughs> be happy to explain further. And you are mixing the batches inside the building. Yes. So the only exterior dust would be really the result of offloading the cement powder yes. into your storage. Yes, it would material. be from offloading when we do the storage when we store. Are you? Uh, does it come in by truck or yes. by train car? By truck. Okay. What kind of noise levels do you anticipate? Um, the noise would be really, it's the, these spinners that uh, do the centrifugal spinning of the pole, they, that's, that's the noisiest part of the operation and within our facility, we will have interior walls designed to, to trap the noise. And you know, we have, we have OSHA regulations and, and everything else that we have to adhere to for our own internal noise protection. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Had Vice Chair Lowe, do you have, you have uh, a question? Has the fire department reviewed its plans? They have reviewed for access and water and have signed off. Mr. Lowndes. I'd like to pursue the, the noise level just a little bit a uh, from the heavy equipment plus the manufacturing. We've got people that live near this and if you have transportation of large cranes at nine o'clock at night, that may be a bit much. Uh, what is the noise level 
of those cranes, do you have another plant someplace that you can compare it to? Uh, yes, sir. The, the noise level for those cranes is minimal because they have to move so slowly. It's not, I mean, it's, it's certainly less, less noise than a uh, tractor trailer makes um, when it's idling. Compare it so, to a front end loader. Uh, front end loader, it's, it's more quiet than a front end loader. Because they, 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 creep, they creep along. It, it is, it's like a boat lift. A what, sir? A boat lift. Think about one of those big boat lifts, like okay. one director, but it's not quite that big. Okay. But think that, about that's what it's going to look like. That gives me a better visual of what you're talking about. You're not talking about a, a, a crane that you dig ditches with lifting these things. You're talking about a, a hoist that's going to move slow. Yes, sir. Um, I'm, I'm still a little concerned about the late night. Is that standard for you all to work that late at night with two shifts, I guess? It is, it is standard to work two shifts. Um, I would not say it's standard to work until 10 o'clock at night on two shifts. It's more, what we like to do is we, we would have an eight hour shift that starts at say 7 a.m. And then the second shift would come in and have a three or four hour overlap over that. So we're really talking a total of, you know, 12 hours, seven to seven is, more typical but sometimes if we're behind we may have to work overtime and there may be there may be nights that we do have people there till 10 o'clock would you be loading these poles out later than 10 o'clock at night no sir we would only do that during the daytime um, typically the loading uh, usually happens in the mornings how long what's the length of these poles some can be a hundred 110 feet um, wow those, those are very rare because you have to get special permits to all those. Usually they'll be in sections that are 40 to 60 feet. I'm sure that the corner going from favorite road to post office road has been looked at as a turn of what you've got to do to get off your property and get to Midway with it. Yes, sir. We've run the auto turn and we've um, spoken with the client and they're very familiar with how to na navigate through through streets with these poles. So um, and and we, we are we do have to construct favorite roads. So we probably will have a little bit bigger turning radius there in order to make that turn. Mr. Curry, is there any consideration for the size of these poles entering Midway Road and getting on to Midway Road? No, sir. We have no concern with that. We've done all of the work and we feel like it would be good. Staff, is there a concern from you all concerning that, that size of pole and tractor or trailer and such have you getting into and out of this area so, off of Midway Road? So we have had the, um, the turn analysis and the, the uh, truck movements being, had been submitted to the Development Review Committee and have been signed off by the Public Works Department. So I, I don't know if we've ever, I don't think I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a hundred foot pole going down the road, but from what the client has told me, Hal and, and his associates, the, a lot of the pole sticks out over the truck. So it's not like it's a hundred and, and 10 from the back of the cab. It, it goes actually, I'd say 30 or 40 feet of it goes actually over the cab. So it's, it's not 110 from the cab back. It actually sticks out over the cab a bit. Mr. Curry, I, I understand. And I'm just concerned the traffic that's on Midway road is going to get worse. It's going to get more. Um, and you've got then, an industrial truck that's going to enter that traffic flow. You also have industrial trucks that are going to exit off a of midway into that road that's going to affect the traffic. Uh, I've, I've got a concern with that just by the physical traffic that's on Midway Road at that point. And, and Mr. Lanz, I believe um, Midway Road's in the process of being improved as, I mean, their, their plans are being proposed at this point. So I think that would only help us with the traffic circulation here. And there's actually, we can go out to the, the back entrance if we need to, that's just going to take us out to Jenkins Road as well. So there's a couple of different ways to access this point. Okay. So um, we, the, you know, these, these guys have looked at all of the different um, options that they have for entering the site and they feel that this site is, it will, will function for them. You do have another ingress access to it besides Midway Road? It would, it would be Midway Road. It would just be another access out to Midway Road. We can go around the back end and go up to where Jenkins is supposed to come through. That, that 
that internal road on um, post office road goes up and circulates around and ties back into the rest of the industrial park where the Indian River Packers facility is and all that. So it's, it would be another access point to, to, to back to Midway, not outside of Midway. Thank you, Mr. Curry. I'm, I'm, I'd like to hear more about, about your noise a little bit later as your presentation continues. I, I just wanted to say one more thing about the hours of operation. We really haven't limited the hours of operation. That's not something that, that my client or myself have, have, have offered up. I believe staff is just like we discussed implementing the code, we would be okay with an hours of operation season at 7 p.m. So we would offer that up right now if that helps the board. I like that. <laughs> I, I would, Mr. Chairman, I, that would certainly smooth my considerations from 7 to 10 o'clock at night with residents in that area. What's the in aspect to the the trucks going out into Midway into traffic. I mean, what's the like turnaround on these poles? Are you having five or ten of them going out a week, or what's the what's the anticipated truckload Usually frequency? Usually, it's, it's probably four to five a day. Okay. <coughs> and when it's, we're going out, we're always turning right on to Midway because the uh, you know we're, we're going either north and south on I-95 or the uh, turnpike. Mm -hmm. On the, the site plan, it noted coming out of favorite, it showed you turning right onto post office road and looping around. Is that, that was I, something we noticed on the, on the I site don't, plan. I didn't see that. You talk, is there a turning analysis? Is that what you're speaking yeah. of? Yeah. I don't remember what page it was on. I didn't know if that was on purpose or. Sorry, we, we do those turn in, those um, auto turns all the time, and I think we were just showing it could go either way. If it can go north, okay. it can go south. So there was no intention. We um, we run those a lot just to make sure that the trucks can maneuver throughout the site. So um, we probably should have done one for the north and one for the south. But I, I don't. There was no. There's no magic to the reason it's going. North. Okay, I was just wondering about that. The um, buffering for the residential neighborhood. Um, I know the eight foot opaque fence is what I believe is required on the code, but um, I believe in the neighborhood meeting it was discussed about doing a concrete or cinder block wall. Are you guys open to it that? Was, it's an option in the code. The code says you can do either or. I just wanted, before we talk about concrete versus fences, talk about a little bit about separation and what's going to go there. The <clears throat> staff um, identified that our building is extreme, as far to the west as we can basically push it. It's over 800 feet from our property line from the property to where the building is. In that area, we're gonna have a lake, we're gonna have um, an open area that we're not proposing any development And Right now, if we were ever to propose development in that area, we'd have to come back before this board. So it's not like we're trying to sneak in something in that area. Up against the lake, we're proposing a 10-foot landscape buffer, and then we actually have to have a 21-foot of upland planting around the lake that the code requires. The code requires basically 10 feet around your entire lake, but it allows you to put 50% of that um, to keep 50% clear. So we're gonna have a 10 foot buffer, 21 foot of upland planting, and then a 10 foot littoral area. So overall there's about 41 feet of planting from where the fence is going to go to where the edge of the water is. So there's gonna be quite a bit of vegetation in that area. Our thinking was that, that the separation that we were providing along with the vegetation, we felt like a fence was gonna be enough from, from, uh, from a sound standpoint. The reality is I'm not sure that a wall helps with sound any more than an eight foot fence. I think the landscaping that we're proposing is really gonna, is gonna help with the, the landscaping and the separation. The, the mechanism that makes the sound is, is in the building and it actually has a wall built around it because it, as it spins, they don't want anybody getting near it. So it's got a couple of, of things internal to the building that are going to keep the sound from escaping. So um, you know, we haven't, we haven't, we don't, we can't, we can't make this the, the noise. So we can't test it to see what it's going to sound like. But I can tell you that we do have to abide by the code. So let's say we, I um, have had the privilege of dealing with a bunch of car washes around town, and, and car washes are often <laughs> noisy as well. <laughs> and we can test those a little bit because we have the information. But the reality is that the car wash people are smart about that and they can put buffering things. They can, they can put um, silencers on the blowers. They can add walls. They can, they can add things to help with the sound if mm -hmm. the sound is an issue. We don't believe the sound's going to be an issue. 
But if it does become an issue, we do have to comply with the code. And then we would have to do things internal to the building to keep the sound down even more. What's the, what's the fence going to be constructed of? We're probably going to do a white PVC fence. We think that is the best. Um, it la lasts the longest and, mm -hmm. and, and holds up to the elements better than a wood fence. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Mr. Odell was next, yeah. I believe. <coughs> Mr. Curry, <laughs> does this conditional, uh, conditional use, does it have a sunset? No, sir. As long as we comply with the conditions, it's, it goes with the land. Okay. Thank you. But Mr. if we don't comply with the conditions, then you guys right. can withdraw. You can pull it. <laughs> then you have a sunset. Yeah, that's right. Vice Chair Lowe. I have a question. Too. Um, there is no traffic light when the trucks pull out, is there? No, sir. No, on, on, at Midway, there's no traffic light there or at where future Jenkins would be. Well, yes, will you put, how, long, how long does it take for this truck with this 60 or 100 foot pole to pull out? Will, it, will you put warning signs or something like ahead? We haven't, um, there will be no um, official you know, flashing lights saying big trucks. We haven't, we haven't talked about that. I think that's something we could potentially do. Um, how have you guys thought about how yeah. if you're going to have a, another person that comes out and stops traffic, how that's going to work? For the, um, for the really long ones, you have to get a special permit to travel on the highways and you have to have an escort. For the really long ones? Which, you know, there may be one of those every six months. There may be a year that we have zero. There may be, you know, two in one month. They're, they're sporadic. They're not predictable. But the good thing about those is there not very many of them. Um, with the, the standard traffic going in and out of there every day, it's no bigger than any other 18-wheeler. Usually, usually, typically, it's on, a, it's on a 19 wheeler standard flatbed. Longer poles, they have special trailers where part of the poles go over the cabin truck, so it's still within the, you know, the standard highway limits. Okay. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Lowndes. Mr. McCain, can you give us some idea of where our residents are in location of this by going back to your aerial? So the properties directly to the east of the uh, red property boundary are um, designated um, agricultural residential. And there are, just at the southeast corner of the property, there is a, uh, another few properties that are zoned residential or agricultural residential. So basically the, the uh, residents that are on Selvitz Road is what we're concerned with? That's correct. And favorite, yeah, because favorite and, and goes favorite through. Road. And the, the facility then will be at the, towards the western edge of this property? East, yes sir, western <coughs> edge, I'm sorry. Hello. I apologize, what is Western edge. It will be on the western portion of this property? The, the manufacturing plant will be on the western edge of the okay. property, that's correct. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner? Uh, how about lighting, is there gonna be like a lighted yard or something that's going to have light shining into the residences or anything or is it all pretty much internal lighting because you only you said you're only moving poles during the day the, there will be lighting but the, the there is an office associated with this facility that's on it's even further west than the, the building the manufacturing building there will be a parking lot there that will be required to have lighting uh, there's really no proposed lighting on the east side of the building at this time um, as far as the storage areas, I'm not certain if there's going to be any lighting or need for lighting in the storage no, areas. If, if really, if we're only going seven to seven, we would say that we don't we don't need any lighting there. So it appears maybe, all the lighting maybe, will be may, maybe for security purposes, but nothing um, other than just you know may, maybe <coughs> security lights. Okay. Um, we had discussed. I don't remember seeing it in the in the plan about the forklift beeping. Yes. Did, did, you, did you guys have any comments about that? I know we discussed something alternative to the beeping. <laughs> yes. So, Chair, we did uh, discuss internally with staff. Uh, OSHA has a white noise backup beep mm -hmm. um, that's approved by OSHA, and that could be a um, another tactic to reduce noise mm -hmm. for the um, the crane. Okay. 
Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, we, we are we're aware of that. It's white noise. Um, it sounds a little bit like static. If you if you ever we went on YouTube and, and researched it, and my client researched it, and it's something that the crane does uh, um, offer as an option, and we would be willing to have that as a condition as well instead of the beep and have the white noise. What about uh, forklifts and stuff? Is that just for the crane? Yeah. I, there's really we haven't talked about forklifts. How the <laughs> forklifts would all that we use would all be internal inside the building. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I'm speaking from experience, <coughs> living a lot, lot closer than 800 feet to a, a roofing supply company, and the forklifts are definitely the most annoying part of it. <laughs> Constant beeping. Uh, any other questions from her staff or the applicant at this time? From the board. What would be placed in the proposed open space? Is that the native vegetation that's on site presently, or do you have a landscape plan for that? There's, there's no native vegetation on the site presently. It's an orange grove. So it would probably just be sod or have bahia um, grass in it, and um, it'll look like a, a yard. And it'll be maintained. That's what our proposal would be. Mr. Munt? Was there any discussion about putting a signal on Midway? Um, no, sir, we have not. We were not requested to, to do that, and we have not heard any rec requirements for that. I, I was at the Sheriff's Department on Monday, and I waited a long time to get on Midway and uh, had, had to really time it in order to get out there. Um, and I'm, I'm just thinking about on busy days. Typically, you have to have, a, if you have a signal, it has to, have to meet a warrant study, which is a certain amount of trips on both roadways, and you can't for the most part and unless it's a special circumstance you it's difficult to get a signal on a roadway especially like post office road that doesn't have that many trips on it so um i, I don't know we haven't we haven't been asked to look at that so i haven't we haven't even considered it it's it's getting awfully busy as mr lowndes pointed out on midway road and it's just yes, going to get worse travel the road pretty regularly i agree <laughs> chair <That's> taylor <laughs> yes chair taylor commissioner mont uh, regarding the midway road link Obviously, uh, we've experienced a reconstruction project of Midway Road from U.S. Highway 1 west uh, to Selvitz Road, and it tapers back to a two-lane uh, undivided roadway. Uh, the, the county continues to evaluate opportunities to uh, widen Midway Road from Selvitz west to Torino, where it does pick back up to a four-lane uh, roadway. In addition to that, uh, this, this project's east of uh, the Midway Industrial <coughs> Park, that industrial park uh, originally had a developer's agreement and uh, you know a cumulative traffic assessment uh, to uh, determine when a signal would be warranted at South Jenkins and Midway Road. Uh, so the county is keeping track with concurrency and assignment of trips on uh, South Jenkins itself. And the county, of course, is evaluating uh, the link of Jenkins from Midway Road north to Glades Cutoff. <laughs> And so that signal analysis is on the horizon as the county and the turnpike authority evaluate uh, the, the potential for uh, a turnpike access at Midway and that being a, a tool to hopefully <coughs> facilitate oh, reconstruction of the overpass, Midway Roads overpass of the turnpike. Obviously, uh, we're, we're planning long range and, and it's consideration of infrastructure dollars and, and timing. Uh, so certainly, uh, you know, the, the concerns of level of service of Midway Road in the short term are, are there and present, uh, but we are uh, actively working and evaluating uh, how we can provide relief and, and improve that infrastructure, that uh, east-west arterial. Is there a, <coughs> a thought of the four-laning Midway uh, in that area? Certainly. Timing? Uh, timing? Uh, I do not, unfortunately, I think we have a, a, a firm timeline. You know, I, I think we'd love to uh, testify that it would, would occur in the next uh, five to 10 years, but it, it's, um, it's, it's uncertain as to that timeline to be able to facilitate it. Again, the, the largest cost and impediment is the overpass to the turnpike. Uh, and the turnpike is planning long range to be able to add lanes uh, to, to their north and southbound traffic so that uh, overpass uh, is uh, continuously expanding, uh, that what that span will be and, and what the cost. And so we're, we're trying to spearhead a partnership. Uh, the county has opined on design and, and configurations for a 
sun pass only on and off ramp at midway in the turnpike. Uh, and so we're, we're collaborating with the Turnpike Authority and DOT to examine how, how best to approach that because that, that okay. is one of the biggest hurdles. Uh, but, but to your point of, of signal analysis, uh, you know, that, that was part of our review. We had a third party traffic consultant and prior to a final site plan approval for this project, a certificate of concurrency would be required. Uh, we understand that uh, based upon the employees and the, the activities of this project, roughly 200 trips per day, uh, the majority being employees, uh, light uh, truck load when it comes to deliveries to and from the facility and, and poles being removed. Uh, one thing is part of the conditional use. You know, we talked about when, when are peak hours. Uh, so between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. is when folks are heading to work, heading to school. Uh, same thing with 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Folks returning home from work and school. Uh, there may be a consideration to, uh, and it, I'll, I'll say it lightly, it's, it's challenging to uh, provide active enforcement of this, uh, but it, it may be possible for the company in operation to dispatch uh, their delivery trucks when we, we have the longer, larger trucks bringing poles from the site to their final destination uh, to assign those trips off peak hours. And again, if you're a truck driver, the last thing you want to do is be turning on the Midway Road at, mm -hmm. at uh, 7.30 in the morning or 8.15. Uh, so considering between 9 and 3 and uh, again uh, between 6 and 7 p.m. Uh, might be uh, more more It'd advantageous be to times. their advantage to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Even if it's a strong recommendation as opposed to an enforceable condition, I, I think mm -hmm. that's that's a, a value to, to contemplate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. 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 Slack. Um, with the anticipated changes to Midway Road and the Turnpike overpass, there may be closures that could cause operational difficulties for the applicant. Have alternative routes been addressed that would work for their particular loads? For example, going up Selvitz to get to Edwards could be difficult due to constraints of load allowances on that bridge where it crosses the river. Um, is there a vehicle um, an opening in the median on Selvitz from Favorite to Selvitz if they were to have to go out in that direction and would the roadway be able to handle that kind of traffic if there were some closures due to construction on the bridge or the roadway? I mean, we've seen four years of construction madness on Midway already uh, east of the site, so I, I can't even begin to imagine the closures related to putting in a new overpass. Chair Taylor, uh, Commissioner Slack, the um, comprehensive plan, the Cassins mixed use activity area requires that access come from the west and they would not be improving the entire favorite road. So on the map in front, you can see where <coughs> the gray line ends. That would be the end of the improvements to favorite road from post office to the, to the west. Right, I can read that on your diagram. What I'm talking about is a short term abatement of a, a traffic problem oh, where we've got I road closures. You looking through, going okay. through this road. I just mean when when traffic comes to a standstill on Midway due to construction or the weaving of the lanes like we've seen east of here during the four years of construction that we've been dealing with already, what happens to these trucks carrying very long concrete pylons or poles? You know, how, what are what are the alternative routes for them? Is there is there a tenable solution if we've got construction closures? Uh, Chair Taylor, Commissioner Slack, I think broader picture because obviously you've, you've highlighted uh, priorities of, of improving transportation infrastructure on Midway Road. Uh, the county is also evaluating Selvis Road from Edwards South uh, to Midway uh, alignment, its intersection with Glades Cutoff, because that that stop sign, that intersection, uh, certainly could utilize some upgrades. And then again, Glades Cutoff from Selvitz South and, and even South to Commerce Center Drive at the rear of the reserve. So big picture, I think if uh, if there were to to be the need for an alternative other than sending trucks east and west uh, west of the site on Midway Road. Uh, County's evaluating uh, how to, to run Jenkins North, uh, two glades cut off, crossing FEC tracks. You can see the right of way has been preserved. That would run to the west of the uh, Florida Municipal Power Plant, uh, which is situated to the northwest. Additionally, you can see the, the extension at the north side of Post Office Road when it, it loops around the, to Jenkins. Uh, there was the concept of interconnectivity between uh, the Midway Industrial Business Park. Uh, up to Energy Lane, 
because of the private nature of FPUA and FMPA's plant, uh, that is not accommodated through traffic. However, there, there is the potential for private parties to collaborate and have some relief and, and basically take traffic from South Jenkins and Post Office Road to the north through Energy Lane back to Selvitz. Now that puts them on Selvitz and, and they would then have to continue either north to Edwards uh, or north uh, to take a, a westbound left turn on the Glades cutoff. Uh, so certainly uh, it, it would be a, a planning uh, and a private party exercise to, to consider alternative truck routes, but the, the county and the TPO are uh, actively looking at this area, the growth, uh, whether it's in the city of Port St. Lucie to the west, the city of Fort Pierce to the west, and obviously uh, in, in the county and cities uh, to the east. You know, Midway Road is, is heavily utilized. Uh, the, the expansion is arguably overdue. Uh, but it, you know, industry and, and, and tax base uh, and, and the sales tax initiative are hope uh, are providing opportunities uh, to bring these projects uh, closer to fruition. And a partnership with the, the Turnpike Authority is is key uh, to be able to widen Midway Road from Selvitz West to Torino. Okay. All that being said. <laughs> Is there a break in the median on Selvitz if they were to have to go <coughs> east on Favorite? Uh, the, mid, the median on Selvitz as you're approaching Midway Road is, is not that far north. Uh, uh, again, I, I don't think there's Okay, a way. so you can make a left turn from Favorite Road onto Selvitz if necessary? Yes. Okay. And as far as I know, Favorite Road isn't really a road, is it, right? There's no, there are only improving a section from the entrance to the property to the west so they can't leave out of the property to the east there's no road there there's no road no. It's it has a unimproved name. as far as i know i don't know I, th I don't even know if it's a dirt road is it <coughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure one of the neighbors could help us with that west <laughs> it's a what so they're only developing a millings okay. road but it, it ends at the end of your neighborhood right Yeah, I've Apparently got it pulled up on Google Maps. You can see the on that not it. Okay. And I think it shows it on the on the uh, site plan as well that it it ends right at the entrance to the east. There's just a nothing there. Slack, this is the opening in the median and the, the designated northbound left turn in the favorite. Okay. Nice navigation, by the way. That was impressive. He has a lot of practice. Yeah, if you go forward, you see it, it ends right there. Okay. Right here. Yeah. So that will stay the same. Any other questions of staff or the applicant from the board? Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. This is a public hearing. Uh, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this item, uh, we are looking at item. Do I need to do public hearings separately, or can we do both at the same time? Mr. Chairman, Assistant County Attorney Catherine Barbieri, you can, you can announce them and open them and run them conjointly, but I need two motions. Right. But the public hearing can be done. Okay. So this will be on <coughs> public hearing for item 9A and 9B, both the conditional use and the PNRD and site plan. So if there's anyone wishing to speak, please come forward. Nobody? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> I just need your name and address for okay. the record, please. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> My name is Tammy Smith. I live at 4339 Favorite Road, which is the, the two-story. Did we just see end. your house? Yeah. You just saw my house. <laughs> um, actually, the lot to the west of us is mm -hmm. not, it looks all like trees. It's actually cleared. Um, there's um, a couple that, a little family that bought the property, and they're trying to clear it. 
um, and intend to build a house there. So um, I guess we have like nine people on our street, and I'm wondering who these 30 people were. Maybe that was just the, you know, the letters were sent to. Because we're <coughs> all, I mean, who would want this in their neighborhood if they had a house there? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. These are a lot of There's empty the, you lots can show where the, uh, surrounding it. Mm -hmm. You can see where the notices were sent out. The properties are within the... Uh, the properties the in line. purple are identified in the um, 30 properties. But there's no houses except on favorite, right? I mean, on Midway, you've got New Horizons and maybe one house. It goes to property owners, Sheriff's not homeowners specifically. But there's no houses. Is that fair? Right. I mean, it's empty lots. And who, uh, who owns it? Is it the same people that own the, <laughs> the property where the... You know the site is being considered. No, I don't think so. I just I, d <laughs> I don't know who these thirty people are because we've been there twenty two years and some of them been there longer and you know you move in with thinking it's residential agricultural. We have horses and goats and chickens mm -hmm. and dogs and you know cats and everything. Um, I don't know anything about a closed system because I don't know much about you know, concrete plants because, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, I did start researching like a maniac after we got the letter because, you know, my husband has COPD and asthma. Um, my son actually had a collapse lung last year. So we're very aware of, you know, things that can affect your health from dust. And um, all the stuff that I was looking at Obviously, sound and dust are big, big factors. Um, I don't know what they're going to do to, to stop it. Maybe it's, if it's enclosed, it won't be a problem. What if it is? And how do you, you know, how do you make them leave at 10? I don't know. These are just questions because all I can do is look at um, other residents, neighborhoods where people live near, you know, a concrete plant, and they in Florida, in other states. Um, all the same complaints that the the plant just runs 24/7, super loud, super dusty, have to paint their house all the time. Um, <coughs> my husband's retired now. He spends about eight hours a day outside with his garden, <laughs> and a lot of the stuff that I've read said that the plants are just covered in this dust. You know, if you're trying to grow plants and whatever <coughs> vegetables, so there's just so many unknowns. And for this just come out of the blue, um, just doesn't seem fair because, you know, you move in the neighborhood in good faith. We raised eight kids there, and I'm afraid we would have to move. And it doesn't seem right. Like, go somewhere <laughs> where it's already zoned for what you want to do, maybe. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of land around here. So. Thank you. That's. Well, one, one other thing, real quick. Um, I did look up something where the owner of Florida Concrete Recycling, um, he said, you can't do what we do and have it 100% dust free. And he also, and I know this doesn't have anything to do with this. It's just a similar situation. And he, his comment was, um, this property is zoned industrial and residents who move in should be aware of their surroundings prior to moving in. And so to come in and bring this kind of project with this many animals and people, it just, mm -hmm. I, I just, I, don't, I know we had to vote 50% to even have a voice, but ultimately it's up to the commissioners. So please take the little people into consideration. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any other members of the public wishing to speak on this item? You'll have to come up to the mic if, if you want to <coughs> need it for the record. We'll need your name and address, please. My name is Melanie Zollinger, and I live at 4221, two over from her. When was the neighborhood meeting to discuss this? Because I've heard you mention it, but we got a letter 10 days ago. Mm -hmm. And you said that in the neighborhood meeting when you were speaking to him about all the information. Yes, there was a neighborhood meeting on um, Tuesday, September 21st. 
believe that was sent from <coughs> e EDC. The, uh, yeah, the, the applicant was in charge of sending out the notices for the neighborhood okay. meeting. The rest of us didn't know. That's why I'm asking. Um, one of my questions is, where are you storing all of the Just aggregate? Speak into the mic, please. I'm asking him, where is <laughs> he know, planning on storing? Where is he planning on storing all of the aggregate? I heard northwest corner. So the aggregate would be stored um, on the screen. You can see where it shows the silo. Yeah. Just to the west of that. Middle the of the property then? Basically uh, the middle of the property? Uh, about the western, northwestern corner area. How far away from the homes? Um, so the building itself, or the silo itself, is 769 feet. And the building itself is 802 feet. So a little bit more than 800 feet from the, from the property line. So just under <coughs> two acres from the property line? I'm sorry? Just under two acres from the property line? Acres about 400 and something? Um, I don't know that, that off the top of my head. Mm. I'm sure Corey does. <laughs> Chair Taylor, uh, acres would, would be an area measurement. Uh, it would, we could discuss yards. I think the project site's 38 acres in size. <coughs> uh, so as far as the land area in the, the northeast third or northeast corner, I would venture to say there's, there's probably 10 or 12 acres of property between the building and the eastern property line but we can run some I'm just figures. curious our properties are all in acres over there um mm -hmm. and so I'm just curious how far off of our properties acre wise because fate wise I, I'm not as familiar with how long of a distance I'm going to be looking but if you say two acres down the road I know I'm at my neighbor's property mm -hmm. um so I'm just curious how far all of these things are away from the homes. There's actually 21 homes in this small neighborhood mm -hmm. that were now being encased in all of this um, new construction or new stuff. The new buildings going in here, midway. Mm -hmm. There's only 21 of us that are stuck here. Mm -hmm. We love our homes. We've been here. We've been in our home 20, almost 24 years, and we keep having more and more built up. And there's other land down the road that won't cause health issues or dust that would be available for these kind of facilities further down mm -hmm. Selvitz Road than to put it basically in our backyard to blow into our yards or the noise levels in our yards. The beeping, the white noise, while some people don't think it's a big deal, when you can't be outside of your property without hearing all of this day in and day out, it's not white noise and it's something mm -hmm. that doesn't go away and it is something that you learn to have to live with. We were already there. It's not the other way around. We're not moving into their territory like you, you move next to an airport, you're stuck. We're there, they're moving into our neighborhood. So it's really difficult for us to sit there and go, okay, we're, we're gonna have to deal with it. We've been there peacefully for mm -hmm. almost 24 years to have this kind of construction coming in and telling us break your own peace because, well, it's industrial. <coughs> we're just asking you to take into the consideration the small little neighborhood that we have no place to go besides just moving. We mm -hmm. don't wanna move, we wanna stay where we're at. We love our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure also that they cannot build onto, if you approve this, that there is no way that they can come out onto our road because their property butts to the end of our road. Right. Our road is also the only one with a, nor or a north <coughs> turning lane onto mm -hmm. Selvitz Road without the barrier. Uh, anything beyond uh, what we would approve on this uh, site plan that any deviation of that would have to come back before us and before the board of county but commissioners. But then the facility is already there and we're yeah. already stuck. Mm -hmm. right. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Chair, can I ask the county if they would identify where her home is? I'm, I'm not sure if where she lives. If you put the green map up, I can tell you. Is that? The one with the green. Um, my <laughs> property, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's go to the mic. <laughs> Our property, their purple grid, oh. ours is the, I, I was going to, one over to your right. That's our property, I believe. No, one down. We're the long one across the street from that, one, one further down, the green below where you were at. I'm going to zoom in for you. Okay. <laughs> the long one right there, your hand is on it. Yes, okay. that's our property. That's how close it is and approximate to the back of their property. We have two other members that aren't here. The Smiths are the one up and over from us. That's mm -hmm. how close we are to the back of this. And 
60 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet, you still hear it, especially because noise travels. Mm -hmm. So we're just asking you to really consider us. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lance. She was asking about acreage wise from the from the east end of this property to that silo, a, a long five acre piece is 330 by 660. So she's probably, the, the boundary to the silo is probably eight or nine acres deep. Okay. Chair, just for reference, the proposed lay down yard is 10 and a half acres and the proposed lake okay. is five and a half acres. Okay, okay, so you can see that on the, the gray area is 10 and a half and acres just chair, for, for chair, respect. And right. Chair Taylor, if, if members of the, the commission, if I could add, um, we have a measurement of roughly 769 from the silo to the east. If we took that north and south and multiplied it, uh, we'd have a, a box of 13.5 acres um, if that was a one side of a square. Okay. Okay. 13 acres. Mr. Chairman, uh, are, are there any? We're still in the public hearing if we want to. Well, I, okay. Uh, do we have any any other members wishing to come come and address the commission? All right, seeing none, I will close the public <coughs> hearing. Mr. Lowndes has a question, I believe. Is there any consideration from the applicant and the <coughs> county that they would ever use favorite road for an entering and exit? Chair Taylor. Uh, Commissioner Lowndes, the comprehensive plan specifically states that any access to these two properties must come from the west to Post Office Road. Okay, so that that would prohibit any of this traffic going down Favorite Road. That is correct. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could just okay. have a moment just to try to provide some clarity on some items. Um, the, the, the first thing in, in is that this piece has got a, a MXD future land use and the MXD future land use specifically says what can and can't go on this property and it specifically says that industrial uses are allowed on this property. So the land use designation that's on the property now says that it can be industrial. It actually caps the amount of square footage. I've, I've never seen that in, in, in the county comprehensive plan. It happens very rarely where you're capped on the square footage. So the land use is there. We're simply implementing. We're doing exactly what the code asked us to do, what the comp plan asked us to do. We limited our square footage. We're doing the PNRD process, the plan non-residential development process. We're doing what the code says. So the, the use of industrial, now I know there's a, a ton of different industrial uses, but this property, Unfortunately, if for the neighbors, it's it's going to be industrial in the future. So I, I just want to make sure that we're all aware of that that the, the future land use of this property identifies it as industrial. It identifies a maximum FAR. As uh, Mr. McCrane just stated, it also states that we can't use Favorite Road going e west east of the site. So I just want to make sure that we're all aware of that. The second thing is, is the dust associated with this facility. So this is a completely enclosed system, meaning that the aggregate bins that are outside where the rock and stone and that sort of thing are stored are outside, they're covered, they're enclosed outside of the building. The silo, it is it's enclosed. It, the, the materials are brought into an enclosed mixing bin with a top and cover on it. They're not you know, stirring it up with a, with a um, trowel that's, that's creating dust everywhere. These are all enclosed. You know, they have the uh, they they have to have a clean nice pole as well. They don't want dust and things all over it. So this is a completely enclosed system, and the likelihood of dust getting out we, we can't we don't see that happening in the way this process is. So I think those are the two things that I wanted to state is that this the bin the outdoor bins have got covers on them. The silos are completely enclosed, and the mixing bin where this stuff is mixed is completely enclosed inside of the building. So I don't again I I, I um. I often say, and, and I sometimes come across as, 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 as a little bit too aggressive, and I don't mean to be that way, but this is a pretty good use for this property. The property is going to be industrial. We've, we've got a client that's pushed the building as far to the, to the west as possible. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bigger building, but I think overall from an industrial user, you know, we still, everybody has to abide by the, the, um, the if there's a bunch of dust leaving this site, guess what? We're going to get a code enforcement issue. Mm -hmm. You call code enforcement. Code enforcement comes out to the site. And I'm sure I sat on the code enforcement board for several years and I, and I find a lot of people and I got a lot of properties into compliance by being on the code enforcement board. It does work. I've, I'm, uh, I've seen it. So the code enforcement board is where you would go. So I, I think that 
you know, the, the issues of this property being industrial, it's going to be industrial in the future. Now we, as a group, have to decide what the best use is and what we can do to minimize any impacts on surrounding properties. And I feel like that staff, my, my, myself, and my applicant have, have done that. So I just want to make sure that, that you guys understand the whole, the whole thing. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yeah, oh. Commissioner. Um, Slay. To the to the residents out here, so maybe I can uh, bring some ease to your to your thought processes. But my I just built my house a couple of years directly next to an industrial property. There's semi trucks run through there all day long. There are semi trucks that are on storage there. I have no buffer in between he and I other than a swell in the back. I planted a wall of areca palms. Yes, you do hear some trucks coming and going here and there, um, but. The loudest thing I hear from them is an air compressor. And when I tell you that they, that building is right behind my house, they're right behind my house. You guys have a buffer of 40, 50 with a fence and trees, plus another 800 feet on top of that. I have none of that. And I can tell you sitting on my back porch, because these trucks go all night long because it's overnight storage, you do hear a truck. But I promise you, just from me, it's nowhere near what you think it's going to be. And if they're not going to impede to favorite road, they're not, you're not going to f- really feel the impact of this because it's staying far to the west of you. Um, the barrier that they're building is going to help you also. If they're not cutting into your neighborhood, even more better. So, yes, there's something going to come behind you. Yes, they're going to build up. But the beauty of, of, of the time frame is that I know some of you said you're retired, but I work through the day. So when they're going home, I'm coming home. So they're shutting down. I'm in, but but even when you're home through the day, it's no. I have far more trips going in and out of that property than this ever will in the course of a day, and I can promise you, sitting in my yard, it's nowhere near the issue that you think it's going to be. Um, I know it's scary. I know it's popping up. I know there's growth. We're about to talk about another property right around the corner from y'all, <laughs> here at, right after this. So uh, you guys just happen to live in a in a high demand area. Um, I fully understand because I'm born and raised here. I know I know what it's like to to be in, infringed on or encroached upon. Mm-hmm. But um, having just having the knowledge of living, I, my property butts right up to an industrial property, and I can tell you that um, at this point, it it really doesn't bother us whatsoever. And I can see their trucks moving. You guys won't be able to see anything going on over there once they have this build up. So just hope that maybe gives you a different insight. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Curry, uh, for ingress and egress, is Divine Road an option for you? Take a quick look. Mr. Odell, I've been in this county for a long time, and I know a lot of roads, but I don't know that road. (laughs) (laughs) If you look on the map, Divine Road is basically... Uh, perpendicular to <coughs> favorite road I mean excuse me parallel to favorite road yeah. uh, down Selvitz I don't believe there is a public right of way there I think that's North St. Lucie River Water Control District it's, I don't think there's public right of way there no, uh, right of, public road right of way I should say right yeah, that I mean, is it correct. W- definitely would Selvitz. need some improvements but is that an option to, to come in through the uh, through the north end If you'll see where favorite road is, just look on the top. That's Looks where like Divine a, Road would A dirt be. road from what I can see on Google Maps. Yeah, it, it would be under subject parcels mm-hmm. then. Uh, Chair Taylor, uh, Commissioner Odell, that, that is uh, Water Canal District right-of-way. It, it's not public right-of-way for transportation purposes. I, I think that the trail and pathway you observe is, is used for maintenance of that canal. And, and there. Okay, so that is not an option. Yeah, there's houses okay. on that road. All right. One lot. But this, I believe this is a property appraiser map. It only shows really one lot adjacent to us along the south side of the canal, right? It's actually split into the okay. arrows covering it. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any other questions, staff or the applicant? Okay. Mr. Slack, thinking about it? <laughs> Mr. Curry. Would the applicant be willing to put in a dust abatement system, such as sprinklers um, around the silo and the aggregate storage building, in case there were dust 
created by the offloading and movement of the materials? Um, I believe so, yes. I don't think there would be any reason to not do that. I'm, but what I'm, again, these questions that you guys are bringing up about dust, I've been working on this project for a couple of months now. And we, unfortunately, I, I, maybe I'm just not as, as detailed oriented as, as these guys, as, as y'all are. Um, there, there's, but, a, there's a lot of dust that's been created but, by the batch plant on Midway Road and the concrete recycling facility next door to this, it. That's all open though. This is all enclosed. I, I, I mean, recognize the, the that. That's where they store the aggregate and have tops on them indoors. The, the, when, the, when, they got, when the company, when the group comes to, to put the um, cement mix in, they have a hose that they bring from the truck and they tie it into the, the silo. This, the, the, the cement dust never, from, our, from the way we do manufacturing, we can't see where there would ever be any dust that, that escapes this. So if having sprinklers there, I don't know how we, where we would put them or what we would do, but anything that we can do to, to help, <coughs> you know, to try to address your concerns, we're, we would be willing to do it. So we're, we're going to have to have irrigation there for the landscape in any way. So I don't think it's any big deal to, to run some additional lines over there to that for a couple of irrigation heads. I think, is that what you're speaking, is that what you're thinking of? That, that sort of thing, yes. Yeah. And, and actually, your explanation of how the, the cement powder is moved from the truck into the silo is helpful. And it can help the neighbors understand the level of dust that they're going to experience. That sounds extremely minimal. Can you explain also how it gets from the silo into the mixing it's facility? It's the same system. It's a hose that comes out of the silo, goes into an enclosed mixer. Think of a, mm -hmm. a big mixer that's got a cover and a top on it. Mm -hmm. It's all enclosed and it mixes inside of that. So it's, there's really no, it's not like a guy with a shovel that's going in and shoveling it out of a silo and putting it in a mixer. It's all done through hoses. It's a, it's a contained system. Okay. And, and um, my client, Hal, and both um, the guys that are texting me here, so I'm looking down at my phone a lot. Um, <laughs> They keep saying washed rock, washed rock, washed rock, and I, I again, I'm, I'm a planner, so I don't know everything, but um, I guess washed rock makes a big deal. There's no dust associated with it. It's a washed rock that comes to them as the aggregate. So that that's, that's the other thing that they keep saying is the washed mm -hmm. rock. Okay. I think uh, mentality-wise, here when when we when we talk about a concrete plant, and you drive all over our area, you see all this open outdoor stuff, and people are thinking front end loaders picking up dirt, moving them here, and I mean, that's the vision, right? Trucks driving around, <laughs> dust coming out everywhere. That, I mean, that's what we're envisioning, but this is not <clears throat> the case with this, this no, system. Right. Uh, Chair Any Taylor. other questions of the applicant or of staff on the board? All right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Curry. I think you can sit down finally. Um, <clears throat> so we'll, we'll go ahead and move uh, item 9A, the conditional use permit uh, petition. Um, so I'll, if there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Mr. O'Dell. Okay, I have a motion. After considering the testimony pre presented during the public hearing, including staff comments, and the standards of review as set forth in the St. Lucie County Land Development Code, I hereby move that the Planning and Zoning Commission forward a recommendation of approval to the St. Lucie County Board of Commissioners for a conditional use petition to allow concrete manufacturing as an allowable use within the Arcosa planned non-residential development subject to the conditions of the resolution because the proposed conditional use petition is consistent with the general purpose, goals, objectives, and standards of the St. Lucie County Land Development Code and the comprehensive plan. Second. Um, point of clarification, I know the applicant uh, offered to limit the business hours till 7 p.m. Is that included in your motion? Yes, it is. Okay. But hold on. Are the petition and the, the petition and the PNRD are two separate things, right? So oh, our right. conditions. So that should be on the next Conditions one. would go on the PNRD? Right. Right. We'll yes, put sir. it in both. Yeah, they'll, they'll Chair Taylor, they'll be built in together, but the conditional use is, is traditionally where reasonable would conditions would be applied okay. to business operations, and you know, that, that could be anywhere from hours of operation, uh, priority truck routing times. You know, we, we talked about the, the fabric of the buffer wall uh, and even recommendation of uh, dust containment uh, precautions. Okay. <coughs> like that. Well, that's in there. Okay. And we talked white noise. Second. Yeah. All right. We have a motion is seconded by Commissioner Lowndes. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Bridgers? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Slack? Yes, ma'am. 
Mr. Binner? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Slate? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lowne? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Munt? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Odell? Yes, ma'am. Vice Chair Lowe? Yes, ma'am. Chair Taylor? Yes, ma'am. All right, motion passes unanimously, and then we'll move on to item 9B. If there's any further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Those are just suggested motions, remember, you don't have to read from them if you're not prepared. <laughs> Chair Taylor. Commissioner Slack. I move we approve the PNRD with the stipulations described earlier regarding the construction of the wall um, being out of concrete rather than uh, PVC as a more permanent medium and the other discussion items that were mentioned regarding the traffic. I feel that this project addresses a serious need in our uh, building construction industry and would be much appreciated by many people. Um, and as a gesture to the neighbors, I think they've done a fine job of pushing their most intensive uses far to the west and sparing the neighbors as much as possible noise and dust in their development. Seconded, Chair. Okay, seconded by Commissioner Lowe. Are we uh, adding any stipulations to this as far as like closure of time? Um, she had We're added uh, seven o'clock. Do we talk about a that? concrete wall instead of an opaque fence, which I don't believe we really discussed. Well, we. Right, or they thought that they didn't need because there's 40 feet of buffer. Right. Okay. So that was the motion. Oh, okay. The motion was including a concrete fence and uh, hours of operation and dust dampening measures. Correct. Okay. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Bridgers? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Slack? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Binner? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Slate? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lowne? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Munt? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Odell? Yes, ma'am. Vice Chair Lowe? Yes, ma'am. Chair Taylor? Yes, ma'am. Uh, motion passes. And we want fishing rights for all the neighbors for the big lake. Keep in mind that we are just a, an advisory board. This will move to the Board of County Commissioners for a final review and uh, decision. So, you know, we, we might look important up here, but. We're just uh, recommend, recommending uh, approval to the board. Mm -hmm. Y'all might want to stick around for the next one because yeah. it's right around mm -hmm. the corner. I think you're the same people that'll be here for yeah. <laughs> item 9C. Uh, we'll move on to public hearing item 9C, Madam Secretary. Item 9C, Wawa, Bidway, and Selvitz Preliminary Plan Non-Residential Development, PNRD, rezoning at site plan. The applicant is seeking approval of a planned non-residential development rezoning and preliminary site plans to be known as Wawa, Midway, and Selvitz PNRD. Welcome, Ms. Jody. Good evening, Chair Taylor and members of the commission. Tonight I'll be presenting, for the record, my name is Jody Kugler, Senior Planner with the Planning and Development Services Department. Tonight I'll be presenting item 9C for a planned non-residential development petition submitted by Engineering Design and Construction on behalf of Wawa Florida LLC to allow a gas station with alcohol sales as a permitted use within the proposed Wawa Midway and Selvitz planned non-residential development. <coughs> In accordance with the public notice requirements outlined in this outline in section 11.00.03 of the St. Lucie County Land Development Code, advertisement for this public hearing was advertised in the St. Lucie, St. Lucie County News Tribune on sun, Saturday, November 6, 2021. In addition, notices were mailed to adjacent property owners located within <coughs> 500 feet of the subject property and two signs were placed on the subject property, one at Midway Road, and the second sign was placed on Salvitz Road. 
The 6.02 <coughs> acre project site <coughs> outlined in red is located at the northwest corner of Midway Road and Salvage Road in Fort Pierce. The future land use destination is commercial, which allows for permitted uses within the commercial neighborhood, commercial office, and commercial general zoning districts. The subject parcel is designated by the neighborhood, commercial neighborhood zoning district. The adjacent zoning des designation include commercial neighborhood and agricultural residential to the east, agricultural residential to the northwest, and the city of Port St. Lucie district located to the south. The submitted preliminary plan identifies a 5,820 square foot convenience store with alcohol sales <coughs> and outdoor seating, a canopy which includes eight gasoline pumps with 16 fueling positions and associated site improvement including on-site storage retention area, water and wastewater connections with, for, with Fort Pierce Utility Authority, an eight foot tall OPEC fence, and they are providing 23% of open space, which only 20% is required. The applicant held a public, held a neighborhood meeting regarding the subject petition on July 8th of this year. Approximately 15 residents attended. The residents to the north expressed concerns regarding the applicant to maintain the existing tree canopy to buffer the noise and light pollution. The representative agreed to maintain the existing tree line outlined in green. <coughs> in addition to the separation provided from the proposed structures, the proposal requires the applicant to provide 10 foot of landscape buffer along all property boundaries and a 15, 15 foot landscape buffer adjacent to the right of way. Furthermore, when a non-residential development abuts residential, the code requires an eight foot tall masonry wall or OPEC fence and perimeter tree buff plantings and a continuous head should be planted on both sides of the barrier in accordance to the land development code section 7.09.04 parens E. The submitted preliminary site plan identifies eight foot wall tall OPEC fence and required landscaping will be constructed along the eastern and western portion line adjacent to the residential property. In accordance with the public notice requirements outlined in section 11.03 <coughs> of the St. Lucie County Land Development Code, notices and response forms were mailed to the adjacent property owners within 500 feet of the subject property. Of the 28 notices mailed out, the Planning and Development Services received no response. The conditions of approval that we're proposing is access is shown on the preliminary site plan is not approved with this application. Any proposed access beyond the site property adjacent to Midway Road will require a cross access, access easement agreement with the adjacent property <coughs> prior to final site plan approval. This concludes staff's presentation and staff and applicant is available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brad, do you have a presentation on this? No. Any questions of staff or the applicant from the board? Mr. Chairman, I would like to say something. The last, the last um, application, I um, unfortunately didn't give my opening speech, and I wanted to commend staff and this board and everyone else. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but several months ago, I was before you proposing changes to the PNRD code. And we talked about how the PNRD was a good tool for the county to use to help, I don't want to use the word control, but to place regulations and restrictions on a piece of property while you did the zoning. So you did both of those things together. And we, the county made a pretty significant change to the PNRD process. And I think I remember saying that instead of saying it's going to make it easier, it's, it's really a working relationship between staff and the applicant. And tonight I have three PNRDs before you. So I think that's just an example of, of when we made the change to the code, it made it a, a, a process that we could work with staff. The first one, I didn't really have a choice. The one that was just before you, I had to do PNRD. These next two, we chose to do a PR, PNRD. There's several options on how to pr propose this development on this property. 
The property that we're proposing tonight, believe it or not, is an allowed use, is a conditional use on this property. But what we're doing is we're doing the PNRD process because we liked that process and it gave staff a level of comfort as well. So I just wanted to say that, just to commend everyone, that we worked through that doing the PNRD changes and it's really coming to, mm -hmm. um, to the truth, it's coming to fruition as we speak. So um, just wanted to introduce Scott, Pe I'm sorry, Scott Kearney. Um, I was about to say Scott Peterson. Scott Kearney, <laughs> who is here with Wawa and David Baggett from my office is here as well. David is the engineer of record. Um, Scott, you know, is welcome to could come up and speak it and tell you guys anything about Wawa. I did want to mention that we have, Scott and I went out and met with Vince Peterson, who is, um, who is the property owner directly to the north of us. We walked his property line. We went over what type of buffering to put in there. And he's unfortunately not here tonight, but he, he's been in pretty much support. I can't, I'm not going to speak for him, but, but we had a neighborhood meeting and then we actually had a second meeting where we went and walked the property line with him talked about trees that we were gonna save, talked about what type of material was gonna go in in that buffer on the north property line. So I um, just wanted to, to let you guys know that Wawa, Scott was there and I was there and we, we put in the extra effort here. So be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Any questions, staff, the applicant, hey, Mr. Benner? Was, uh, from the neighborhood meeting, was there preference on the, the fence or, or concrete wall? I couldn't make out whether it was a fence or a wall on the plan, separating the residential from the... Um, I should have looked at that because I know we went back and forth, but I believe we settled on a fence on there. I think that was okay with the property owner to the north. I think if I remember correctly, uh, uh, Wawa offered to add some additional landscaping on. Correct. On his side it, of the fence. Yeah, on yes, his sir. side of the fence, on his property. I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> uh, any other questions of staff or the applicant? Jerry, when, you, when you said the uh, the condition was that there be no that the access was not approved with this plan, can you point to the access that you're referring to? Okay, so that's the part that is not yeah. approved. The other two access points are uh, Chair Taylor and Commission Black. <coughs> the property is 6.2 acres. Um, as you can see, this property will be platted after the approval for the PNRD. And the um, access for the parcel B has not been approved based on the location. So we want, when, when the, the applicant comes forward or whoever purchased parcel B, we want to be able to evaluate that access further and to um, get an agreement between the two property owners to have a joint access. And is that because it's so close to the driveway of the residential property to the west? Uh, Yes, that, that residential uh, driveway is existing. So we, that is one of the things that we do want to evaluate whenever a site plan moves forward on parcel B. I can, I can add to that. David Bag at EDC. Um, what we've done and, and, and what you can't see exactly on a map is we've been coordinating with DOT and their consultants about the improvements along Midway Road. We actually went to their um, public meeting that they had um, to discuss the improvements along the corridor there. One, to, you know, <coughs> let them know our presence, and then two, to, you know, start that collaborative relationship. And we did it in a way that, that the residents were there. I see some of the folks, um, the, the, the residents that are immediately to the west of us are here tonight. And one, what, what you don't see there, and, and on the plans I think we, we put in file with you guys, they are planning to do a left turn lane straddled along the property line uh, on the very western boundary <coughs> where the mouse is on the screen. Um, so, so we are anticipating, you know, to be able to uh, to provide a driveway there at that time when that time comes. However, like we said, we don't have the exact use on that second parcel yet, so we want to leave it flexible to work that in. The goal is to collaborate with those folks and make sure that we're, access works for them. They were actually ahead of us working with DOT to make sure that they got a left turn there. Um, it's going to help them. <coughs> it's going to help us. We're we're probably not going to get a left turn lane any closer to that intersection. So the more collaborative we are there, the better for everybody. Okay. Mr. Better. Yeah. Um, fuel delivery trucks. Are they going to? Where are they going to be coming in and out of here? From? So the the design, you know, and and this is strictly for the zoning portion of it. We we, we have a lot of those items that kind of work out with the site plan approval. It's intended though that they would stick to the Wawa entrance that we're providing, the right and right out. Um, they All tend turning right hand off of Midway, or are they coming off of Selvis? Yeah, uh, primarily it would be, um, 
it, it would depend on what their truck route was. They have other stores in the area. So if they were, say, going to the new one that we're <coughs> finishing up on Virginia and then coming down yeah. this one, they may be coming from South Jersey. Absolutely. Yeah, and Scott can elaborate a little Thanks. bit more on their circulation. Yeah, Scott Carney, real estate engineer for Wawa, and uh, worked on all the projects, actually. We have open in uh, St. Lucie County to date, uh, so we've got three stores open already. And the idea here where the fuel truck deliveries would take place, they would probably, uh, they could access probably either access point and still make the delivery uh, on site because we have a, a layout that's got the dimensions to allow it to go from both access points. They wouldn't be doing U-turns or anything on either road at the fuel truck? They should not have to, no. So it, most likely it would be they'd take the right in without having to do a U-turn movement. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Staff for the applicant. Where does that, uh, where are the fuel tanks on the site plan, please? So on the site plan, they are located on the south side, uh, southeast corner of the fuel canopy area. Uh, just down a little bit further south. It's a little bit more. There you <laughs> oh, go. Oh, right there. Okay. You can right kind of see a little oh. yeah, it's kind of line like on the faded out a little bit. <coughs> if you but they're located right there. <laughs> Almost on the hard corner of the intersection. And if there were a spill, how do, how do you deal with catchment of s spilled fuel? So we take our spills, environmental issues, anything associated with fuel very seriously. That's the last thing Wawa wants to have. And so we've got uh, the, the top of the line tanks that we put in the ground to begin with. They're double walled with a brine solution in between them that is pressurized so that if there's any potential leak, it would be no noticed immediately because it's monitored 24-7. 365, an alarm would, would go off in the store itself and also at our headquarters up in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia. And so wh when that happens, it shuts down the system immediately. <coughs> it's an immediate response from our spill response team that we have on standby for those kind of uh, concerns if that would happen. <coughs> haven't had an issue like that really occur. If there's a spill on site that's above grade, above ground, then that is notified immediately to our stores there too. They get spill containment kits, our, we have m multiple associates that are trained on what to do, how to do it, how to report it if it's a reportable issue. And uh, this training is repeated annually. Some are required to have certain certifications too in addition to that to make sure that they're up on the latest standards and regulations too. So again, the last thing Wawa wants is to have any concerns with spills. So we try to minimize that possibility to begin with. Is the edge of the parking lot curved? So it that is. if there were a spill, there would be a way to keep it contained while you were able to absorb it? It is curved, and I know it would go to the rear. So right now our tanks are up to the front side, and ultimately we go to the retention area on the north rear of the property. So it, most, most likely we'd be able to detect it and to you know, get containment in place before it would get into the, uh, the stormwater system to the north. Excellent. The hours of operation? We're 24 7. Right. That's what I thought. What is the, um, in your parcel B, what is the potential of that <coughs> parcel? Like, what do you look for for? For the remainder to the west? Yeah. So it would comply with whatever the uses are that are allowed by zoning right now. We haven't marketed actively at this point. We're trying to get through these steps sure. first for our, our piece. And then once we have that uh, determined, then we'll move forward with the remainder. But gotcha. we, we, we don't have a, any signage out there right now promoting it. Okay. Cool. Unless you've got some ideas. I might have one. <laughs> Just I might have one. <laughs> Moon Swiner South? <laughs> I only got one idea. <laughs> Close to my house. I don't yep. hate it. Yep. <laughs> any other questions of staff or the applicant from the board? All right. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, this is a public hearing. If there's anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item, uh, please come forward. Nobody? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to the board for further discussion and or a motion. Mr. Mutt? There's no discussion. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair. Okay. After considering the testimony presented during the public hearing, including staff comments and the standards of review, as set forth in the St. Lucie County Land Development Code, 
I hereby move that the Planning and Zoning Commission forward a recommendation of approval to the St. Lucie County Board of County Commissioners for an amendment to the official zoning atlas for a planned non-residential development PNRD rezoning from CN Commercial Neighborhood Zoning District to the PNRD Zoning District and preliminary site plan for a retail convenience store with alcohol sales and outdoor seating, including a fueling station and canopy within the Wawa, Midway, and Selvitz Road PNRD, subject to the conditions of the resolution because the application is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the St. Lucie County Comprehensive Plan and satisfied, satisfied the standards for review for rezoning and site plans in the St. Lucie County Land Development Code. Second. Ooh, that was a long motion. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Um, if no further discussion, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Bridgers? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Slack? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Binner? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Slate? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lowndes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Munt? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma <laughs> Mr. Mr. Odell? Oh, oh yes, ma'am. Vice Chair names? Lowe? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. No, Chair I'm Taylor? Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I think Mr. Odell voted twice, but I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> My hearing is going. Uh, okay, uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, I just want to say thank you to, to Wawa. I think you guys have proven yourself to be a pretty good neighbor so far. Uh, I haven't at least myself heard any complaints about any other properties. And so we just thank you for the effort you put in. Mr. Chair, may I ask Mr. a question? Mm -hmm. uh, when will your Wawa store open on Virginia Avenue in US 1? <laughs> uh, first week of December. Thank you. Okay. Oh. I'd say that's the only complaint I think I've heard was the one in tradition took too long to build. <laughs> People were too excited about it. <laughs> Are you targeting uh, Lakewood Park at all? We can, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got two acres, don't you? No. Clearly, man, I know this. That one. Oh, all right. Funded, but we are very, very happy with the St. Lucie County. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Uh, also. We've, uh, these people have figured out who we are, and they come very frequently. Yep. I can't imagine. I know we're glad to have you, man. <coughs> Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, guys. Great yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank Thank you. you. All right, we'll move on to so item 9D, MMRV right Park there. Planned, PNR, <laughs> whatever, rezoning, yeah. preliminary site plan. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Secretary, why don't you read that just in case? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> MMRRV Park Plan Non-Residential Development, PNRD, Rezoning and Preliminary Site Plan. The applicant is requesting a planned non-residential development, PNRD, Rezoning and Preliminary Site Plan to develop an 80-lot recreational vehicle park with amenities on a 16.97-acre lot <laughs> of land within the MMRV <coughs> par um, <coughs> Park at PNRD. The rezoning from CG Commercial General Zoning District to PNRD Zoning Di District. Much better, thank you. Ms. Jody, I believe you have a presentation. Again, for the record, my name is Jody Kugler, Senior Planner with the Planning and Development Services Department. Tonight I'll be presenting agenda item 9D for a planned non-residential development petition submitted by Engineering Design and Construction on behalf of Friends One LLC to develop a recreational vehicle park within the MMR <coughs> RV park plan non-residential development. In accordance with the public notice requirements outlined in section 11.00.03 of the St. Lucie County Land Development Code, advertisement for this public hearing were, was advertised in the St. Lucie Tribune on Saturday, November 6, 2021. In addition, notices were mailed to the adjacent property owners located within 500 feet of the subject properties and two signs were placed on the pro subject property, one at North US Highway 1 and a second sign was placed on Turnpike Feeder Road. The subject site consists of two parcels outlined in red with a combined area of 16.97 acres located on the North US Highway 1 and Turnpike Feeder Road north of Kings Highway. The future land use designation is commercial, which is a compatible to the commercial general zoning district. On September 28, 2021, 
The Board of County Commissioners adopted an amendment to the Land Development Code to allow Recreational Vehicle Park Zoning District as a permitted use on properties classified as commercial. And the subject property is designated by the Commercial Zoning District, Commercial General. The adjacent zoning designations include Commercial General to the North, East, and South, and, a, and the Agricultural Residential located to the West. Proposed development is consistent with the supplemental standards with in section 7.1016 for the recreational vehicle parks. This site includes 80 RV sites outlined in purple on the parcel east of the Turnpike Feeder Road with the western parcel entirely dedicated to preservation and open space. A 25 foot landscape buffer borders the north, east, and west edges of the site for privacy and noise intrusion for adjacent traffic. Additionally, a preserved edge of varying width is located along the east and north boundary. A 20-foot mm -hmm. buffer is provided to the south adjacent to the existing mobile home. Community amenities include a pool and a clubhouse inside the southern edge of the RV sites with a recreational area in the southeast corner. Detailed designs for the common areas along, along with analysis of all the proposed buildings consistent to be with the county's community architectural standards within section 7.10.24 will be reviewed with the final PNRD site plan. The 6.14 acre parcel to the west of the turnpike feeder is not proposed for any impacts and therefore is being designated to count towards meeting the open space requirements while the 10.56 parcel to the east of turnpike feeder road is proposed for impact for the construction of the RP, RV park. The parcels are currently vacant and unmaintained. The private primary access will be from North US Highway 1 and a proposed unpaid stabilized emergency access from Turnpike Feeder Road. In accordance with the public notice requirements outlined in section 11.00.03 of the St. Lucie County Land Development Code, notices and responses for forms were mailed to the adjacent property owners located within 500 feet of the subject property. Of the 13 notices mailed out, the Planning and Zoning Services Development Department received no responses. The applicant held a neighborhood meeting regarding the subject petition on August 12th of this year, and there was no neighbors attended. We got to fix that typo. It was on both of them, <laughs> on the other power, the other slide there. Oh, sorry. You okay. see it? The typo on the slide. <coughs> not in favor and not in favor. Oh yes. <laughs> It was on the other one too. I was just making sure yeah. someone's aware of that. The red is really not in favor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Probably as red as my face right now. I'm glad you clarified that. I, I really I'm not getting that. <laughs> <laughs> the proposed our, our, our proposed PNRD rezone and preliminary site plan conform to the standards of review as set forth in St. Lucie County Land Development Code sections 11.06.03 and 11.02.07 and have been found to be consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the <coughs> St. Lucie County Comprehensive Plan. Staff recommends the Planning and Zoning Commission for a recommendation of approval to the Board of County Commissioners subject to the following conditions of approval. <coughs> Prior to approval of the final major site plan, the applicant shall demonstrate compliance with the Land Development Code section 710.24 community architectural standards for the clubhouse including a lighting and sign plan <coughs> recreational vehicles site shall be for rental only no sale or individual sites is permitted the length of stay of each rental site is limited to 180 days in accordance to the Florida statute <coughs> this concludes the staff presentation staff and applicant is available to answer any questions thank you thank you Jody are there questions. any questions of staff? Um, Jody, I can ask a real quick question. Sure. Looking, go, can you go back to the original plan it, it, it showed? Okay. The ingress and egress on that property coming down Turnpike Feeder Road? Uh, uh, Chair Taylor, is Commissioner Lau. Yeah. That is an unstabilized emergency access only. That's an emer I was wondering yes. about coming on the Turnpike Feeder Road. Yes, yep. that it's is only correct. emergency. The primary access will be off of US-1. US-1. I think a future pedestrian access was discussed. There is a, 
uh, yes, uh, there is a future pedestrian access along with the Greenway trails that we're, we're going to incorporate the county's uh, Greenway trails okay. along Turnpike Theater. Any other questions of staff? No? All right. Mr. Curry, do you have anything to say? <laughs> I always have things to say. <laughs> Good evening, um, board again. It's the EDC hour here tonight at, at the Planning and Zoning Board. Um, this is another example of an application. We had a couple of different ways to approach this project. We could have come in and rezoned it to recreational vehicle park. Um, there were some concerns from staff about other uses that are allowed as part of the recreational vehicle park. So again, the PNRD was a tool that we used to restrict the uses to just recreational vehicles instead of potentially mobile homes or manufactured homes or other uses. And so it's, it's again, a use of a tool that this board and the county as a whole implemented. I'm very excited about this project. My client's actually already closed on this piece and they're excited about moving forward. So um, be happy to answer any questions that you have. Commissioner Benner. Uh, so you said RV park, so no, like what about tiny homes built on utility trailers? Nothing, it has to be an actual RV with the tag yes. as a yes, designated sir, RV. Yep. And is there any age, like age restrictions? So I'm not nope. bringing a 1950s hoopty <laughs> into this RV park and <laughs> filling it up with a bunch of those? Um, well, I'm <laughs> sure you could do whatever, if it was, if it had a license plate on it and it was able to run on the road, it probably could be just about anything. But we don't expect that. We really think this is a great location. I think it's halfway between Fort Pierce and, and Vero, and you, you can come here and stay, and you can get the best of Fort Pierce and the best of Vero. So we're really, really good location for our mm -hmm. department. Mr. Mott. Uh, Mr. Curry, on your uh, neighbor meeting, uh, was that the invitations? Uh, did you provide those? Yes, sir, I did. And was it the 500-foot radius, or how did you determine who you were going to invite? It the 500, invite? and we had no one show up, actually, so... I'm sorry, say again. There was, we, it was 500 feet, I believe. We get the list from the county, just so you guys know how the neighborhood meetings go. When okay. I'm required or requested to get a neighborhood meeting, I call Jody. Jody calls the GIS department. They send me the list. I write a letter. I put the label, and I send it out. So you send it out by mail? Yes, sir. Okay. I, w I was pleased to see that um, I, when I first saw it was down at Tradition at your offices, but then I saw in your letter you also said you could participate by a Zoom. Yes, sir. I think that's great. Yes, sir. It was, it's a tough spot. I usually try to find a location. Those last two projects that were just up were on Midway Road, and we had both of those at the Chamber of Commerce building, which is just down the street. It was a perfect location. This one was a little bit tough. I was thinking about downtown Fort Pierce, and so I figured that with COVID, and we this, we set up the Zoom pretty well, so I had that as an option. Yes, I'm sir. sorry you didn't get any attendees, but it was a, <laughs> a good way to handle it. Yes, Thank sir. Thank you. <coughs> uh, I had a similar question because the the notices the there's a I think it's a rental RV park to just the to the to the south. Only one notice goes to that That's property right. owner. So I thought that was worth noting. That right, I don't think everybody individually no, was. Sir. It's just invited. one. It's just one property owner. Yeah, okay. so it looks like there's a whole bunch of people to the south, but it's one yeah. one property. Thank you. So I had the same <coughs> same question. Isn't Pineapple Joe's <coughs> near that? A little bit, yeah, a side. little bit further Kinda. south. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a great idea for that location. Yeah, there ain't much else going to. <laughs> Any other questions from staff, Mr. Slack? I can't quite see all the things on your site plan because we're zoomed out so far. So can can you zoom in, maybe, Jody, so that we can see some of these things along the south edge? There's something, okay, recreational area, wetland buffers. So I, I could maybe walk you through. So that's okay. a, a little bit a wider buffer along the south. That was where we put our extra space. To the, to the left side or to the west of the property, I think they're proposing pickleball courts there since that's the new fad. And then across on the north side, there'll actually be a clubhouse with a pool and everything over the lake. I do want to talk about the east side of the property. You can notice that we only have um, like two RV sites there on the south side, and I don't. I think we took all the ones. Our original plan had RV sites up and down there until I walked the site with the environmental department, and um, I was out there. It was I like doing that sort of thing. So we walked it, and that's um, scrub habitat along US one there. So we were able to work with the um, environmental department, actually preserving that rare and unique scrub along along US one. So that's kind of the the outlook of what you're seeing there. 
It's going to look a little odd with just two sites jammed up against well, US-1. You, you still have a 20-foot buffer there, so it's going to be a little bit... You still, you still, it's not like they're going to be right against US-1. There'll still be a buffer there. I, I can't get an idea of what the scale of the buffer is. Do you, do you know what the distance I, dimension is? I um, have the plan here in front of me. I should be able to tell you that. I agree with you. It's hard to read it there. Propose something, landscape it's buffer. It's 25 feet. 25 feet, okay. Yes, ma'am. And what is, what is in the white area on the south side of the pond um there is a couple of things there we're going to have a clubhouse on the west side of the um that that first one where jody's hand is now is is a is a clubhouse and then to the right of that is a parking area and then i don't know why we showed it on the preliminary development plan but that beautiful rectangle at the corner is a lift station <laughs> cool I have a question. So on, on each of the RV sites, is there accommodation for car parking? And and then is everything connected to this, uh, like a central wastewater treatment it is. system? There should be a detail if I did, if I remember right. Um, I guess it did not show up, but maybe it did. Yes, on the last, on the second page, there's a typical RV space that shows uh, 60 by about 105 foot watt long RV space. And it has the ability to have your RV, a car, and a little patio area. And that will have um, centralized water and sewer and electric that you plug into uh, that goes to the lift station and everything else. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Mr. Love. Uh, where's the uh, waste disposal in your this project? So we were just talking about that. There's a big, there's a lift station on the bottom right-hand corner um, on this page. You can see it. It's rectangular, just south of the RV sites in the purple, um, in the right-hand corner of the property. So there'll be a, a typical um, wastewater collection <coughs> system, just like you have in any neighborhood, where there'll, there'll be gravity sewer lines in the facility. <coughs> and the gravity lines will go to that lift station, and we're actually having to tie into the sewer, I believe, down at Indrio, I think. So we are going to have to run some it's sewer up, up It's there. not up to Indrio yet. I'm just coming up there, isn't it? Yep. Is it, where's the garbage going to go? Um, I, this is the preliminary development plan, so it doesn't get into the detail of the exact location of the garbage. And so um, we believe we have provided dumpsters probably around the clubhouse. I'm, unfortunately, I just don't have that in front of me right now. But yes, sir, we are going to have to provide dumpsters. Any other questions from the board? Thank you, Mr. Curry. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, seeing that all of the public has left, I, am, I will open the public hearing if there's anyone wishing to speak on this item. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for further discussion and a motion. A motion to approve. Second. <laughs> all right. No, I you had a motion and a second? Somebody else did. I second. Yep. We got a motion to approve in a second. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Bridgers? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Black? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Binner? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Slee? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lowndes? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Munt? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Oldell? Yes, ma'am. Vice Chair Lowe? Yes, ma'am. Chair Taylor? Yes, ma'am. All right, that concludes our public hearings for the evening. If there are no other workshops, other business, so. Other business, please. Christmas. We have December. Mr. Mr. Chair. Are we having a meeting in December? Yes. <laughs> Anyone? <coughs> Leslie? December 16th. <laughs> Is there a meeting? As Leslie's coming up, I, I find it interesting, Chairman, that we have a lot of development in that area there, Andrea Road, and mm -hmm. a lot of traffic. That TVC still intact on that two lane stretch mm -hmm. for one mile. All right. You could probably just ask Brad if <coughs> we have anything coming up. So true. <laughs> uh, for the record, Leslie Olson, Planning and Development Services Director. Uh, our, our one possible for um, our Christmas season, our holiday season, happens to be in the room, and he said he's good with not doing it then. So uh, we will we'll give you guys a break. All right. Thank oh, you. Oh, we'll take Marvelous. No meeting on Tuesday. Right. Monday. Is there a motion to adjourn? We should do adjourn. We are adjourned. Second. Thank you. <laughs> I got to go to camp.